Let's blame everyone. This is your DJ Marlon M. Wanki from the College of Criminal Justice Education. So I want you to fasten your seatbelt, take the notes, and then listen. So again, for the disclaimer, pictures and information shown in the slides are for general education purposes only. All information herein are provided in good faith and the instructor in charge has the intention to claim nor to omit. What is heat? What we know when we say heat is what we feel when we are directed, uh, when we receive the sun rays. And we all know that sun rays is uh, comprised with the uh, infrared and as well as ultraviolet rays. But the UV rays is one that burns the skin. And the heat that we feel is from the infrared rays. So defining heat, heat is a form of energy generated by the transmission of some other form of energy. Energy is the result of the movement of tiny particles called atoms, molecules, or even uh, ions in solids, ions in uh, liquids and uh, gases. Heat energy can be transferred from one object to another. It's just like also when you just played basketball. When you uh, sit with a person who has just played a ba uh, basketball, you can feel the heat from your seatmate or from that person whom you seated with, which the heat also is transferring to your body, which increases also your temperature. Same goes also with the water. When the hot water is, trans is poured with the cold water, the temperature of that cold, cold water is turning into a high temperature. It's, that is why a heat is also tra is transferred from one object to another object when there is a contact. So the transfer or flow due to the uh, difference in temperature between the two objects is called heat. Again, the transfer or flow due to the difference, uh, difference in temperature between the two objects is called heat. So, makikita nyo sa ating slide. A form of energy generated by the transmission of some other form of energy. So, there are also common sources of heat. First is the chemical energy. The most common source of uh, heat in combustion reactions. A good example is already shown in our slides, on our slides, that a battery can also produce energy. Why this bulb, after a few minutes, when a light is on or switch, you try to hold that lamp or the bulb, you can feel the heat. Okay, you can feel the heat. An energy release as a result of a chemical reaction such as combustion. Okay. Battery produces energy that can or capable to produce light, electricity that will make the lights or will make the bulbs will light. It is energy stored in the bands of chemical compounds, atoms and molecules, exothermic reaction. Again, we had already discussed and distinguished between exothermic and endothermic. 
one that releases energy is the exothermic. Going back, again, chemical energy is energy stored in the bands of chemical compounds, atoms and molecules, exothermic reaction, such as the batteries, biomass, petroleum, natural gas, and as well as coal. Okay, so if I will ask like this, what, which among the following choices that releases and gives off energy? A, exothermic, B, endothermic. The answer is exothermic, all right? Now, chemical energy, because there, the batteries as well is comprised of chemicals, yet it can able to give energy for a vehicle to function in order to provide lights, isn't it? Okay, let's say, for example, we, we don't have uh, during the blackout or even brownout, you can make use of generator. And the generator, it requires also the chemical that will generate electricity. That is also a good example of chemical energy. Okay, so as a result of a chemical reaction such as combustion. Another also, that the chemical energy may also give reaction towards combustion because it may also provide heat. The reason why there is a, uh, a sudden fire or sudden ablaze of a building, it may be because of the electricity. Okay, because of electricity that we cause combustion. Another common source of heat is electrical energy. Energy develops when electrons flow through a conductor. We might not be able to see by our naked eye, but the way the electricity moves, it goes to line direction it goes to a zigzag flow of direction. Electri electrical energy can generate temperature, isn't it? Are you amenable with that statement? Again, electricity can generate temperature. The answer says, we use an appliances that requires electricity before that appliances can function. So, again, electricity uh, can generate temperature high to ignite any combustible materials. Okay? Then, uh, for the natural energy, a natural energy can cause a combustion as well. A natural energy such as when yung nangyayari doon sa ibang bansa, bigla na lang yung gubat nila doon ay nagkaroon ng apoy. Malaking apoy. That is hard to be extinguished. So the force that required current flow through conductor is called voltage. If there is a high voltage there is a high voltage may cause, really cause combustion. Okay? And that there is a possibility when there is a wrong placement of plugging wires and said the wire should be plugged in with the 210 volts and what you have done, or 110 volts and what you have done you plug it on a, uh, with the uh, adapter or you plug it with the with 210 volts. So what will happen? It may cause explosion. That may cause combustion. Okay, so again, um, the electrical energy can generate temperature high that may cause a sufficient combustion. Another source is the nuclear 
energy and energy generated when atoms either split apart okay we call it as a fission one small atom are divided into two okay one atom is divided into two and it can be split it can be also combined not only split but also combined and we call it as fusion as when um goku and piccolo are joined are merged uh, have this fusion of course there will be a creation of a new form Okay. So when atom is combined with another atom, what do we expect? Of course, the atom becomes bigger. Okay, becomes a bigger. On the other hand, in a fission, when one atom is divided into two, of course, the madamian. So what will happen when they keeps on, when the atoms are keeps on uh, being divided? There will be numerous or the number of atoms will expand and a possibility that there will be a collision. Like I said before, when there is collision due to um, numerous atoms, a possibility that they may collide when they are contained in one container, it will produce, uh, there will be a uh, resulting to a high temperature thus releases more vapor like unlike the atom okay there is no pollution di nagkakaroon ng banggahan so it is hard to produce a vapor thus it is not easily being ignited however in a nuclear specifically when used to generate electricity okay when in it generate electricity so Fission used in nuclear reactors since it can be controlled. It can be controlled. On the other hand, fusion is not utilized to produce power since the reaction is not easily controlled. So among the two, fission and fusion, which one is can be controlled or easily that can be that is easy to be controlled? It is the fusion and it's hard to be controlled is the fusion that is why fusion is not advisable to be utilized to produce power okay it's hard to be controlled so it is the fusion that is uh, advisable to utilize power because it can be controlled okay so i I just mentioned a while back that the chemical, I already told you an example of the battery, battery that can generate light, and as well as the generator. That makes them different only is the, uh, what is being used that can generate a power, that can generate Power. Because in the chemical energy, it is purely chemical, but nuclear energy requires a special. The uh, main distinction, by the way, the uh, main distinction of the uh, nuclear energy and as well as the chemical energy, the uh, chemical energy can be either exothermic or endothermic, but no uh, nuclear reactions produce large amount of heat for the same reasons reactors are constructed near water bodies just to ensure the availability of uh, water to call the reactors. Another uh, example of, uh, or another distinctions of these two is are in the um, chemical energy, the stronger the bond, the more chemical energy that can be converted. While the uh, nuclear energy is the energy that can be converted to the other forms when there is a change in the nucleus of an atom. 
Another example or uh, another uh, difference is that in the chemical reaction involve only a rearrangement of electrodes and do not involve changes in the nuclei. While nuclear reactions involve a change in, a, uh, in an atom's nucleus, usually producing a different element. Another source of uh, energy is the mechanical energy. It is an energy created by friction and compression. When we say compression, it is the reduction in volume causing increase in pressure of the fuel mixture in an internal combustion engine before ignition, where it requires energy that come from a person in order that a, um, a machine, let's, for example, can generate power. Eh, yung sinasabi natin na mano-mano. It requires energy, not on the chemical nor uh, nucleus, but the energy that coming from the human. Uh, so, there are times that mayroon yung machine talaga na it requires a mano-mano. We need to, ex as a human, we need to exert energy in order for the machine can provide and can generate power. So it only, yung sinasabi niyang a friction, when there are times na, um, there are times that two objects requires friction before, so that it can provide Hit a good example that you have um, what we have discussed pertaining on the uh, source of fire, the uh, friction method and precaution. Then another is the uh, smoke. Why not say smoke? It is a visible product of incomplete combustion. It is a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and finely divided particles released from the burning material. It is a visible suspension of carbon or other particles in air, typically one emitted from a burning substance. There are, we have already uh, observe in our experience when we are cooking using the wood. That wood, again, is a good conductor of a fire. Since there is a com incomplete combustion thus produces smoke. Okay? It does, it produces a smoke. A smoke is created when substance undergoes incomplete combustion. What is the reason why there is a uh, incomplete combustion? Nang dahil sa kakulangan or there is a incomplete combustion, nagproproduce siya na ngayon ng usok bahay. This simply means that there is not enough oxygen there is the oxygen, percentage of oxygen that can support flash point. But there is more, when there is more oxygen, it's sufficient oxygen to support combustion. Thus, it will result into complete combustion. A good example is the Bunsen burner. Pag-usapan natin yan mamaya. So, this simply means that there is not enough oxygen present when the material is burned, okay? So, ano yung mga nakikita natin na may mga smokes? Diba sabihin natin? Kapag may smoke, siguro mayroong celebration. So, itong mga smoke ay pwede magagaling doon sa mga yung tayo ay nagluluto gamit ang kahoy. We also uh, 
watch napapanood natin at naipapa-broadcast yung mga wildfires in other country. When we had also this campfires, yan, may mga smoke ang mga yan due to the incomplete combustion. The reason is there is no enough, again, there is no enough oxygen. There is no enough uh, amount of oxygen. Uh, may I clarify, this is not, a smoke is not a source of heat, but a smoke is a uh, product of combustion. Okay? Again, a smoke is not a common source of heat, but a product of a uh, combustion. Uh, hindi lang natin na uh, edit. Okay. Next, let us talk about the uh, flame. So again, uh, flame is a, it is the matter produced by fire. Again, it is the matter produced by fire. It is a composed of burning incandescent gases. It is the manifestation of fire when fire is in its gas phase combustion. We had already distinguished flame from a fire. So again, flame is a uh, matter produced by fire. A fly, flame that is accompanied with uh, with the light and as well as the uh, heat. So, pag may na tayo nakikita, is uh, it's a flame, okay? Because a flame is a uh, again, it's a flame that is has a light as well as the uh, heat. For according to color incompleteness of uh, combustion, the luminous flame. What is this luminous flame? Luminous flame. The color is reddish orange. Is go na pansin natin when we uh, lit on a uh, lighted up the candle we see the color of the flame it is reddish orange in color another luminous flame show produces deposit soot why luminous flame deposit soot because there is a incomplete combustion and because of it has a lower temperature. Kaya nga sabi natin kanina, bakit ang daming that smoke accompanied with the soot. Kaya, when there is a soot or when a fire, a flame produces soot, there is incomplete combustion as we had already mentioned. It is simply because there is no enough oxygen. Next is the non-luminous flame. This non-luminous flame has a bluish in color. See the difference in the luminous uh, flame. It is reddish orange in color while a non-luminous flame is bluish in color. So this flame does not deposit soot. We previously mentioned that when a flame deposits soot, there is incomplete combustion. Thus, when flame does not deposit soot, there is complete combustion because the temperature is high. It has a higher temperature. It's just because there is sufficient and certain amount of oxygen that support the combustion. When there is sufficient oxygen that supports the uh, combustion that increases the temperature higher, there will be a complete combustion. As a result, it will not deposit soot.
And according to burning fuel in air mixture, premixed flame is a good example of that is the Bunsen burner. Premixed flame is also known as pre-mixture. It has a form and certain conditions during the combustion of a premix charge. Okay. The premix flame occur in any homogeneous mixture where the fuel and the oxidant are mixed, are mixed prior to the reaction. Again, premix flames occur in homo genius mixture where the fuel and then the oxidant are mixed prior to the reaction. A good example is the Bunsen burner. Okay, the Bunsen burner flame and the flame in most spark ignited engines. Premix flames can progress either as deflagration or detonation processes. Again, there is a mixture of the uh, fuel and an oxidant before the reaction will take place. Next is the hydrocarbon, any substance containing primarily carbon and hydrogen. So it's a mixture between the carbon and hydrogen that makes it as hydrocarbon. While the fusion flame, a good example of the of the uh, diffusion flame is the oxyacetylene torch. It is a uh, oxidizer combines with the fuel by diffusion. By diffusion. Thus, flame speed is limited only. Diffusion flames smoothly flowing like a laminar, like a laminar flame or turbulent. Pag i-discuss natin yung pagkakaiba ng nar, laminar and turbulent. Belong to the class of flames whose ingredients are not mixed prior to entering the burning zone. So it only happens when there is already a reaction. Unlike the premixed flame, ba? pag sinasabi natin pre-test, that is not yet the test, but uh, it is the preparation, pre-test, or yung ginagamit natin, pre-board. It is an exercise given to a uh, examinee for them to be prepared for the board examination. Okay, so yung ginagamit natin, pre. So the mixture occurs or incurs prior the reaction will take place. While the fusion flame they are uh, not mixed prior to entering the burning zone. Okay, so as a result, the flame is limited. What is the distinction between laminar flame and turbulent flame? As uh, we um, mentioned in when we discussed the uh, diffusion flame. So laminar flame is a smooth flame like the Benson burner. A laminar, the above is example of a laminar or the uh, example. Okay. This one is an example of the laminar flame. The flame front is visible as a bright cone-shaped line that extends from the edge of the burner. So converging towards the center as you go up. Look at the difference. Here is the example of the laminar flame. Unlike the turbulent flame, it is a rough flame or the movement is not steady. Okay, so there is a changes direct, uh, direction. So do, you cannot give the definite shape perhaps because of its uh, irregular and roughness of the um, flame. So another difference between the two, laminar flame, the flow of a fluid, when each particle of the fluid follows a smooth path. When the path is not intervened by a foreign particle, 
it remain steady. Diba? If this fire or the flame is not disturbed by a foreign particle, let's say, for example, wala kang hinagis, wala kang ilinigay na mga kung anong bagay, na kung saan the flame is not disturbed, well, of course, the flow of the flame flows smooth and steady. Sa turbulent, flame is the, fl the flow is irregular that is characterized by tiny purple regions. Okay, perhaps it may be the the um, flame was disturbed. Okay, that goes into different directions. Okay, yan yung pagkakaiba nitong dalawa. 